In today's Leeds news, release clauses expire. Interest in Taylor Harwood Bellis. Nice interested in Sinistera and Leeds keen on Cooper. Hey folks, Jay here on the 17th of August with your Leeds news. Hope you're all having a really, really good week. Uh, some more stuff has emerged after the press conference yesterday with Daniel Farkett that might please some people and might uh, make everyone a little bit more calmer around the scenes. We'll get into that in a bit more detail as we go through this. Um, also, um, just been some interesting uh, details on the Tyler Adams situation as well, so we'll get into that. And we'll start off with the release clauses expiring and a Yesterday, Daniel Farke, in his press conference and in an interview that he did with Sky Sports, basically kept saying the closer we get to the end of the window, the more in the driving seat Leeds will be and that Leeds haven't been in the driving seat up till this point because of the relegation release clauses. He keeps emphasising the point that Leeds need to learn from their mistakes and make sure this doesn't happen again. He also said that we can't blame the players for this situation, we can't blame the management and we can't blame the current ownership for this, that this all happened before. So, blame on this is, is still yet to be decided who it should be you know evenly distributed out there but uh, it appears now and according to several several journalists uh, as of yesterday that the relegation release clauses may have expired Leeds will look to retain as many of the existing group as they can and what's, what's left right now and um, which will put Leeds in a very strong position for a championship squad if Leeds can contain can manage to hang on to Sinister and Adams that's two very strong players in this division that would do very, very well and arguably be very hard for Leeds to recruit anybody of that level in the championship. So hanging on to them would be a huge thing. So this there is still training separately and there's a legal issue there, but we'll get into that a bit more uh, later on in this video because there's some uh, interesting things around Sinister as well. Yesterday, multiple journalists, including Baron Cross, Phil Hay and Adam Pope, all said that they believe that the release clauses for these Leeds players were all time-bound and have now expired. Jack Harrison being the last one out the door. Uh, so this there's uh, issue, as I mentioned before, is a legal issue with his contract. It's believed that maybe someone has tried to activate his release clause in his contract, but after the, the, the date or just before the date, um, that will be sorted in the next day or two, according to Frack as well. So we'll see what the situation is with him. Leeds can now, and more importantly in the situation, Leeds can now dictate the price of the players that will come or go at this stage. Now, Adams and Sinistera are the two that Leeds want to retain. They're very keen to retain both of them, but there are still some issues around that. It is understood that Sinistera would like to move away, but isn't pushing particularly hard for it. He has asked the club to consider offers for him. If it hits the price tag, Leeds are said to be looking for anything over 22 to 30 million for the player as well. On the Adams situation, it's slightly different. Adams has been labelled as not pushing for a move away from Leeds, but did move when the activation of his clause was was kicked in. So not so much as him wanting to go to Chelsea, more a case of, well, the clause was activated, you may as well go to the medical and see how it goes kind of thing. Um, it is believed that Bournemouth put a bid in for Adams at the start of the week, and there's a bit of an issue here. Bournemouth believe that they have activated Adams' release clause before it expired. Leeds disagree, and there is a potential for a legal battle there if Bournemouth decide. However, no personal terms have been agreed with Tyler Adams. No talks have happened with Tyler Adams and no medical was done with Tyler Adams and Bournemouth. So it would be a decision, I would imagine, for the player to just say, I don't want to go to Bournemouth. That's the end of that. But as of right now, there's a lot of murmurings going around that Bournemouth aren't happy with the situation, that they believe they activated the clause in the right time. Leeds say they didn't. And we'll have to wait. It's never simple. It's never easy. It's never straightforward with Leeds. So we'll have to see how that one pans out. But it's potentially the worst part of the summer could be behind us now and leads back in the driving seat and they have to dictate prices on players that they're going to sell and start to bring in some players to try and bolster the squad. Daniel Farkett did say he was confident we'd have players brought in, enough players brought in by the time the window closed. So this whole thing about judges at the end of August seems to be related to player retention, these release clauses and potential incomings as well. So there's a lot in that. Uh, moving on to the players leads are interested in. It's not a confirmed one, but according to a couple of places today, um, Leeds are back interested in Taylor Harwood Bellis from Manchester City. Reports claim today that Leeds are back in the hunt along with West Brom and Rangers in Scotland for the player. The Man City Academy project is understood to be leaving the club this summer, but it depends on in which way. There are several clubs been interested in Harwood Bellis, but they're looking at a loan move for the player. Manchester City are believed to be keen on selling the player and not looking at another loan for the player. And a fee of anything between 10 and 15 million pounds is what's been touted by a lot of people. There are no credible links to this story though. They're all coming from smaller areas, but there's a lot of noise around this, which is why I've included it 
there's no dedicated source on this but there's like lots of different people saying the exact same thing so that's where that one comes from but we'll have to uh, again as we always say we'll have to wait and see what happens with that uh, and moving on to Luis and Asteris. So according to Sky Sports News, Nice in France are said to be keen on buying Luis Sinistera. As mentioned, Sinistera's contract has, a release clause in his contract has expired now. Uh, however, they do believe that Nice are still interested in the player. Nice owned by British billionaire uh, Jim Ratcliffe. And he spent some money last year as well. Didn't really work out particularly well from missed out on Europe with Nice last year. Um, he said to be funding this. The rumour is that Leeds won't accept anything less than £22 million for the player, so they're going to have to look at that. Uh, Leeds will be in a situation where they don't have to necessarily. Maybe it's Nice that came in. The reports of Feyenoord being linked with the player, and Team Talk put this out yesterday again, but Feyenoord being linked with the player. According to the Yorkshire Eden Post, these reports are wide of the mark. So, right now, there have been no official or credible offers for Luis Sinistera. This one from Nice is a new one coming out with Sky Sports today. If Sky Sports reporting it, there's possibly something in it, so we'll have to see what happens with that one. And then finally for today, it's a short one today, not a huge amount going on. Uh, Leeds keen on Cooper, not Liam Cooper this time around. According to Football Insider, so you know the deal, massive pinch of salt with this. Uh, Leeds have joined West Brom in the hunt for uh, the Millwall centre back, Jake Cooper. Cooper is in the final year of his contract at Millwall and is seen as a very important player to Gary Rowwood's side. Uh, Cooper's a key figure, but only has 12 months left on his deal. And they could be in a situation where if they decide to keep the player, they could lose him for free or... They could sell him now and try and profit on the player. He is highly rated. It has should be said that Gary Rowett has talked about it today as well. And Gary Rowett's take on this is that they would like to extend his contract and keep him at the den if they can. But that's not being confirmed and not guaranteed just yet. So there are two centre-backs linked with Leeds this morning. So this tends to happen. Someone starts talking about players in positions and a different player in that position signs for Leeds. So we'll have to wait and see. It's going to be a big, what is it now, 15 days between now and the end of the window, closing just under just under over two weeks, sorry. We'll have to wait and see, but there's going to be a lot of work need to be done in a very short amount of time. Leeds have a game tomorrow night against um, West Brom in um, Elland Road on Friday night. So hopefully the press conference yesterday has calmed everyone's nerves a little bit. We know we did a bit of a brief afterwards, and just to point out yesterday, I'm trying to balance things up of saying I can understand how people feel in one sense, but also there's another side to look at it as well. So trying to balance the two of them and, and, and create a balanced approach, and this has been difficult. So... Um, hopefully, hopefully we're now seeing a situation where clauses are gone. The situation Adams and Sinister can get ironed out in the next day or two. Adams is still expected to be out for a considerable amount of time with his injury, but having Louis Sinister available to Leeds again could be massive going into that game. I wouldn't be shocked if he's included in Friday's squad, but he might be included in later squads. We'll have to wait and see. Um, but as it's been said, Adams and Sinny not necessarily pushing for moves away from the club, but if offers are there, would like Leeds to listen to them. Adams' situation is slightly different. Hasn't said a word literally hasn't said a word has just gone and done his business and that's all he has done uh, that's going to be for me today folks so massive thanks as, as always to everyone who watches and supports the channel and I'll see you tomorrow for a, uh, a short news video and, and a possible preview of the game we'll try and get the podcast out early this week because of the game as well or we might just do it after the game on Saturday morning and reset then so um, I'll uh, update members on what's going on with that everyone else can expect to see something Saturday Sunday on the podcast so talk to you then have a great day bye